Hey guys, today we're going to be doing an unboxing of the Triangle Labs Liquid Cool Dragon. Alright, so first things first, we got our Triangle Labs Dragon right here. Uh, Triangle Labs right there, logo. Oh, we've got the standard groove mount up here. Silicone sock, which is nice to see. Um, this is a copper block. And to my knowledge, all these dimensions are the same as uh, the traditional air-cooled Dragon. So, let's see, major points here. Groove mount, silicone sock, copper-plated heat block. Uh, okay, we take this off just like that by unscrewing it. Uh, we've got flats on it here that are for a 10 millimeter wrench. If you want to get that nice and snug. On the top, yeah, this is what I like to see. So uh, we've got four uh, threaded holes there to mount uh, just like that, which is great. Um, I'm not a big fan of the groove mount anymore now that I've discovered just the screw mount. It's just so much easier to deal with. Um, let's see. So we've got barbs here. These are meant for three millimeter uh, hose. And it looks like we've got... So I think this said it had two meters of silicone hose right there. It's nice to see this in here. Um, it kind of sucks when you have to order all this stuff separately. You just get nickel and dimed and it ends up adding up significantly. So let's try and let's see if this is silicone. Um, if it's silicone, this shouldn't melt. It should burn instead um, and have a rather high... Um, uh, temperature resistance. Uh, so let's see. You know, if this is some sort of thermoplastic, this would just melt and get soft. Um, no, it still has its structural integrity there. Let's hold it there for a little bit longer. A little bit of smoke, but that black is just the soot there. Um, okay, I mean, I would trust them to say that that is silicone tubing. Cool. Um, we've got a wrench here. Let's see, this is 7 millimeters, so this will work for the heat break and the nozzle. Uh, bag of Allen keys, fantastic. I always like to have extra. Um, some screws for mounting the block there. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So uh, we've got four of uh, different lengths here. Uh, let's take these out, I'll tell you how long they are. We also have a Bowden clip and uh, little retaining clips there, two of them. Awesome to see that there's extras. Uh, we've got an 8mm and we have, let's see, what's that, 5mm? Let me check this way. 5mm. Okay, so we've got 8 and 5mm M3s there for mounting this, so you have your choice. Put all that away. Got some clips here to uh, attach the silicone tubing to these barbs here. And let's see. It does fit nice and snug on there. That's awesome. With those clips, that'll he help even more. Um, a plated copper nozzle. Cool. We've got some barbs here. These look on the bigger side. This looks like it's meant for like quarter inch tubing and maybe three eighths or five sixteenths. It's weird. Hmm. Okay. Another long Allen key here. I don't know what that's for. Um, now let's get to the interesting part. So let's get inside of this and see what's going on with that heat break. Uh, first things first, let's take out these screws just like a normal dragon. Okay, nice. They're not in there too tight. Sometimes when these get, you know, if you put these in there too tight, um, you know, you can strip that aluminum heat sink. Um, I like to actually leave them pretty loose, to be honest. I know Dragon says to, or Triangle Labs or Fetus, 
they have instructions manual out there and they say to put red Loctite on those. Um, I actually haven't had needed to, had a need to, excuse me. Um, I actually just tighten those just, actually just really not that tight at all. Um, I'm actually pretty gentle and then I rely on the thermal expansion uh, of these, the differential uh, expansion of these materials to actually tighten up um, those screws um, because aluminum has a uh, bigger, uh, you know, it has almost twice the thermal expansion coefficient of steel of the screws. Um, you know, I haven't tested this when it's hot, but I expect this to expand a little bit, expand this gap maybe, and just, uh, you know, rely on the heat to keep those bolts tight. I actually haven't had any issues with it, so, you know, if it works, it works, and it works for me. Okay, that just comes off. I'm kind of surprised. There's a screw right here, right in between these barbs. I think that should be tight. So I'm just tightening it up. Yeah, that should be tight. So let me loosen this and I'll pull it out. So there we go. So this is the high flow version. I've got a ceramic insulator on there. And so just a copper slug on the hot side and on the cold side, another little copper slug. And you're just relying basically on the uh, this gap between this slug and the inside of this jacket, which, you know, it, it feels decently tight. You know, it slides on really easily. Um, you know, I think I would like that to be just a little bit tighter. Um, the tighter that is, the better heat transfer you're going to have from the heat break to this water jacket. And then you can see this little groove. Let me zoom in here. You can see this groove right here. And this set screw in between these barbs just tightens into that little gap and holds it in place. Okay. So now, yeah, that doesn't want to come apart. I forgot the insulator. Oops. So let's take a look at the construction of this water jacket here. Because I find this actually pretty interesting. So, um, this jacket here. This black part. This is all one piece of milled aluminum. Um, and I don't see I don't see any this is all one piece. Yeah. So what they did here is they actually drilled through to make this bore. And they drilled through just like this. Just like that. And then same on the other side. Just like this. So now if we do a top view, you would see that there's a drill hole through this way and a drill hole through this way. Not all the way through, but just far enough. And then they drilled through, see where this ball bearing is? They actually drilled through this side. And then they plugged it with this, uh, with this ball bearing. And it looks like they probably, this is probably an interference fit, so they get a decent seal. And so what you actually have is you just have a simple U-shaped passage going through this. So um, this uh, black block here is almost solid aluminum. There's just a couple drill holes through it. So um, it would be far more efficient if they had some sort of fin system in here, but maybe this is good enough. And uh, we'll find out once we actually go ahead and test this thing. Um, let's see, anything else to say about this? Oh, wait, let's get a weight on this. Grab my scale. If I can find it. All right, so no silicone sock, no nozzle. Let's see what this weighs. So without the groove mount, we're at 53.15. With the groove mount, we're at 58.8. With the silicone sock, we're at 61.3, and then we'll throw the nozzle in there so this thing is fully outfitted. We are at 63.6. .6. So, actually, I'm pretty impressed. This is about the same weight, just like this, is the same weight just about as a typical Dragon High Flow. So I'm pretty impressed. I mean, considering that this thing is solid aluminum, nice, that's pretty good. Um, all right, final thoughts on this thing. So, 
I mean, I'm excited to test it. Um, I'm going to be using it in an 80 C, 80 degrees C chamber. So we'll see what happens um, in there. Um, but overall, quality seems to be pretty good. Fit and finish is good. I've had really good luck with Triangle products. I really haven't had anything um, just come, you know, dead on arrival. So I tend to trust their design, engineering, and quality control. Um, but yeah, proof is in the pudding. So uh, maybe once I get my heated chamber delta up and running, we'll get a chance to test this. And, uh, you know, we'll throw the thermal camera on this junction right here on the heat break, and we'll see actually what happens with this thing. Hey, one last thing about this. So, um, pricing right now, $93. Um, I bought it on sale on November 11th, 2021, and I think I got it for like 65 bucks. Um, so it's a bit more expensive than the typical Dragon um, air-cooled, maybe by 10, 20 bucks. But compared to a water-cooled Mosquito, man, you can't beat it for the price. Um, I think a water-cooled Mosquito is something like you know what, I'm not even going to say, um, I'll just look it up and I'll post it right on the video, we'll put it right, right here, and uh, we'll put the dragon price right here, and we'll show you, you know, what the difference is, but um, off the top of my head, I think it's probably something like half price, so, yeah, alright, let me know what you guys think.